I am back for another day of plein air. This will be my fifth day. I did miss Sunday, but um, I did miss Sunday because I had some family stuff to do, as well as I was up at 4 a.m. to do a bike race, and I chose having a nap later in the day over plein air painting. But if I want this to be sustainable, I thought I best also take care of myself. But we are back, and the other three paintings that I created, none of them worked out, but it was the process of unpacking my stuff, seeing what I have, creating a composition, and hopefully something will turn out today. I was actually going to go back to Queen's Park again because I was reading up about how the cherry blossoms are out, and there's some cherry blossoms around there. But then, as I drove, I was dropping off prints to the post office. I just saw the clouds here. I don't know if you can see them. And I thought, you know what, I'll go over to the Brunette Fraser Park. I would like to go do some hikes later in the week, but this is one of those spots that is near my home, and so I thought I would paint here. It does look like it could rain. There's a nice gray cloud above me, so I'm going to check out the covered areas and go along the, the trail. So you're looking out into the Fraser River. And then behind me is a path. You can see there it says the Burnett Fraser um, Greenway. And then all along here is a path. And above us is the Sky Train. And then beside us is also a railway line. So that might get a little bit noisy today. As well as over at the Patello Bridge, just over there, they are building another bridge. And that is the noises in the background. So we will explore Burnett Fraser Park and see if we can find something to paint and not get too wet. what I want to paint it's probably going to be this spot over here that's surrounded by trees and you have the logs in front but then off in the distance is a mountain so I like that it is so far away that I can build some distance into there but then I also have the layers coming forward and as the clouds change when I get to that part in the painting I can just make the low overhanging clouds I've been studying lots of Canadian painters and Group of Seven and am keen to paint those clouds. So we'll see what happens. So I found a spot to sit in that location. And I'm just setting up my letter easel. This is a new easel I just picked up last week and it allows me to separate the surface that I'm painting on from the palette. And I like carrying my bigger palette so far. I might not like it so much on longer hikes, but it allows me, you'll see this later, but I set up the palette almost as a table with my brushes, my little cups of paint and a mixing surface. The easel, I got it with the extra cup and brush holder. And I'm just doing a quick sketch. I'm, I prefer painting over sketching, but at least this let, lets me figure out where I want to lay out things into the scene. Now this walking area is an out and back. So you notice that a dog just came through and he's going to come through again after. And the owner actually told me the owner actually apologized to me that his dog didn't pause long enough for me to paint. And I'm taking a picture of the clouds because I know for sure the clouds are gonna change in my time that I'm gonna to take to paint. So I can now refer back to the photo that I took on my phone when I go to paint the clouds. So I chose to paint the darkest area first because it also lets me lay out the painting. And one thing I noticed about those two sets of trees is one is more fuller, and that's the set that's on the left. And then on the right, they're a little more sparse. So I took two different tactics of painting them. 
and I'm not sh so sure if I like them, but um, the, one, the more sparse ones were a bit more challenging. And you'll notice when I finish the painting, I actually, after I pack up, I go back into the trees and fix them up a bit. So I'm spending a lot of time right now mixing the exact color that I want. Usually when I'm in my studio, I can glaze colors and, and put sheer bits of paint on top and that allows me to adjust the colors but when I'm outside I only have one chance to get the color so it took me a few times to get that blue of the mountains. I knew I wanted it to be dark and my initial instinct was to make it very bright ultramarine blue but I really toned it down. Now I'm painting a little bit of that foreground where the logs are sitting in front of that, those little islands. Now I'm trying to mix that blue of the far off mountains. They looked like they had some phthalo in them, but then the phthalo was too strong, so then I added white, and then it was too light, so then I added magenta. Now I'm adding back ultramarine, and eventually I got something that I liked. Now I'm blocking them in, and it is covering the trees a little bit, but then I'll go back in and repaint the trees. So I went back to that photo of the clouds to reference that and I see that they're brighter in the foreground or brighter in the middle of the painting and off in the distance and then darker coming forward. So I was trying to mix a gray that would achieve that. There's that dog going back again. So the only thing I noticed that I'd like to do better is when I mix a color, I end up adjusting that color when I keep painting, so I can't actually go back to that color again when I need it. So I try to finish what I was doing before I mix the new color. So there's the lighter white of the clouds coming closer. I was also being strategic that I wanted the higher contrast area more in the foreground, or sorry, more in the middle of the painting to pull your eye into the middle. And then that way the darker clouds kind of frame the sky. So I'm using that same blue in the coming forward as the, the um, mountains are reflected in the water. And one thing about this easel is those tabs were in my way to paint the lower part, so I had to pull it off. And now I'm also looking at what does the water look like on my phone when it's stopped? And how can I do kind of a contrast and compare the t of it moving? What does it look like to my eyes? And then also, what does it look like stopped? And I ended up putting too much paint at once in this area, so I leave it alone. I really like those one single brush strokes with a single color. So you'll see right here, it's starting to get a little bit muddled. So I just stop and go somewhere else to let it dry. And then that way I can put a couple brush strokes in there. I've left that bright blue spot in the middle because there are buildings there, so I thought I'd try painting those buildings. Although, as an overall painting, I prefer it without the buildings. I thought I'd see what it would look like if I tried putting them in. And you can see off in the distance, the buildings actually go almost all the way up that dark blue mountain. So just putting some more highlights in there to draw your eye into the middle, also putting more details. I keep looking back to make sure that the camera's filming. I haven't tried this camera yet for filming, so wanted to make sure that it's still recording. So now I'm adding in a few more trees. So I, I like when you can't tell what I've painted first or second, and so you'll have some of the mountain is overlapping the, the tree brush strokes, and then some of the tree brush strokes are overlapping the mountain. So if you try to reverse engineer the painting, you can't tell. And I'm smiling as a couple came to chat with me. Part of doing plein air is you never know who you might meet. So I'm going back into those trees on the right and I end up when I stand out up from the piece at the end I think these trees are a bit too globby so I actually go back into the clouds to try to thin them out or carve them out so I'll be more mindful in the future when I paint trees without leaves but as we go through the spring soon the leaves will be on the trees and It'll be a completely different challenge to paint the trees. So those logs look 
quite reddish to me, so I'm just trying to figure out what color to make them. But I don't want to make them too saturated because I want your eyes to be pulled in into the background. And I don't want to put too much many brush strokes down because your focus is should be in that middle where the mountains come together. And I chose not to put those vertical stakes in. All right, so I just finished packing up and letting this piece dry a little bit. Since I've been sitting at my easel and, or since I stepped away from my easel and was packing up, I went back in and I fixed these trees. They were a little bit too, they were branches, but they were too thick. So at the end of the day, I prefer this set of trees, but I fixed that set up a little bit better. I'm happier with them now. And while I was painting, it looked like it was gonna rain and there was a dark cloud coming over, but it has since cleared up and we've got that bright blue sky. But we'll keep the dark clouds in this painting. What I ended up doing was I took a photo with my phone of the clouds when I started and then built my composition around that and knew that the clouds were gonna quickly change. So I'm pretty happy with it. And I also really enjoyed having a light blue underpainting. I have never ever tried that before, um, but I was studying some of the work by Robert Genn, a Vancouver artist who also did plein air, and it looked like a lot of his later pieces had light blue in the background. And when I started looking around outside, it made a little bit of sense, especially this time of year where it's colder outside and there just tends to be a blue cast over everything. So I thought I'd try it and I ended up being really happy with it or enjoying it. And now with the light blue in the sky, it would have made even more sense, but that's that's what we did today. Um, or the sky train just went by. The other thing I noticed is I really liked the larger surface. This is a 12 by 16. And so far you've seen me paint eight by 10s, 11 by 14s and there's another sky train. So far you've seen me paint 11 by 14s and 8 by 10s and that's not enough space to allow me to get the bigger brush strokes that I want to get in. And likewise I was just figuring myself out. So I really enjoyed being able to place a big brush stroke and leave it alone and have that as part of the picture. But um, I'm going to keep going with my daily plein air practice and it's also fun to find places and chat with people and just get out of my comfort zone and see what I come up with. All right, since I started painting, I thought I would just quickly show you the view walking back. I thought it was gonna rain on me and now the clouds have parted and you can see the North Shore Mountains. I think somewhere here there's a sign of which mountain is which. But this is the Brunette Fraser Greenway. farther down this way painting so I think we have golden ears edge peak Blanchard peak off in the distance in the painting they were covered in clouds but it's that blue that's in the background and trains also go by in this area Like I said, this train 
is going to block me in, which it's currently doing.